See that right there? All those buildings? That is Hawking College. That right there is where I used to go to school. warning you right now today's vlog is going to be literally all over the place I think you'll enjoy it just uh, just be forewarned all over the place okay so since I can't catch a fish to save my life and um, I'm really bored and I thought I'd just use this opportunity to make a video that I've been getting asked to actually quite a lot recently and it's how do I organize my tackle uh, I am I would say 80% a shore angler as of right now so this is kind of the shore angler setup from when I'm driving from hole to hole or spot to spot. So, without further ado, let's check out what I've got in my little rig. Okay, so right here is my car. Uh, for those of you guys who know, it's a 2001 Highlander uh, six cylinder limited. So in case you're wondering, this is how much space is in this car. I don't even know why I mentioned the car. It doesn't even matter. Here is all my stuff. I just kind of barely organized it last night. So it's fairly decent. It's a lot better than it was earlier, but it's fairly decent. Still some garbage back there. Just ignore that. So to start off with, I've got kind of my lure section right here. This uh, is kind of how I keep everything in one spot. Um, these aren't all my lures. These are the lures that I, I use. They're my MVPs, the ones I use the most. This is a big tub. I think I got it at Target or something like that. And I keep all my, um, hard baits, terminal tackle, swim baits, blah, 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 all that good stuff, and my soft baits right here. And then there's some random stuff at the bottom of this. I don't even know what's down there, but I'm sure I'll be surprised if I go through this thing. Again, I haven't really organized it too well. This is just like a mock organized uh, setup. So I got jigs here, terminal tackle, swim baits, top water, chatter baits, spoons, swim jigs, uh, shallow diving, deep diving crankbaits, and then a little jerk bait box, which is probably the weakest thing on earth. I'm gonna up that this year though. And then my soft baits over here, I put in this big tackle warehouse bag so I can lug from the car to the house to the spot or whatever whatever I'm doing, to the hotel or something like that. So moving on to this little kind of secretive spot right here, I've got a couple things going on. One, I've got bump board right here, which I never use, but it just looks cool. And then I've got a uh, couple mystery tackle boxes. This isn't a plug, uh, so relax. This is actually kind of a useful little thing that I've come up with, well not come up with, but utilize when I'm out in the water. I will use this as kind of my scrap box, my junk box. And what that means is when I'm done with the lure, when I cut it off, I can then throw it in this box and not have to worry about it until I get back home. Uh, like I said, I don't want to deal with my stuff when I'm out in the water. So I don't want to like have to cut the tag ends off these crankbaits, then nicely put them back into the hard bait boxes where they belong. I know that's like ideal and that makes sense, but I want to like waste zero time at all. So I'll put this stuff in a box and then wait till I get home when I'm dry and I'm warm. So then I can organize it. <laughs> These lures have been in the box for about a month. I still have just yet to really get some time to you know organize this stuff. So, oh well, you get the gist though. I may be able to tell what I store right here. <laughs> These are my rods. I store them in the middle because it goes uh, perfectly in the middle of those seeds. Yeah, it just makes sense. I'm not gonna go over all my rods right now. I'm gonna save that for a later video. But uh, one thing I've got within these rods is this big stick. And you may ask, why do you have this big stick here? So then over here is my spinnerbait box. Nothing crazy awesome. I actually have like zero spinnerbaits, so I need to up that game. But this is awesome. It, it uh, When it rains, it keeps all the water from staying in here. That's why the holes are in here. Uh, I like this box. It works really well. I used it in the rain. No rust on the spinnerbaits because it's got holes on the bottom too. So that's pretty cool. Right here is where I usually keep my line, but I think junk is in here right now. Yeah, there's some junk. I keep sunscreen and like all my kind of utilities, the the, the necessary stuff. Uh, if a wire or something like that on a boat kind of messes up, I got that this in here. I don't know why I have this. That's never happened, but I, I keep it in here. This is my hat box. I put my hats in here. Got to keep the JD in here at all times. Love that hat. And then right here is where I put all my scrap line. This is kind of like my garbage bin. This is one thing I really like about this car is it's like a spot where I could throw my garbage and it's not going to get all over my carpet. I put my line in here. I put my uh, loose lures if I'm too lazy to put it in the MTB box. And it works out really well. And uh, these little things right here are gear ties. I use these to tie around my rods when I'm making long hikes so they're not falling out of my hands, not falling on my grasp. And these work kind of well. I just started to use these. They're not like super strong, but they work pretty solid. Uh, the actual name is called Gear Ties. I think they're $10 for two, so it's not too bad. So you're probably thinking, wow, that's great. You should have said to organize your car. That doesn't really help me when I'm on foot. Okay, yeah, that's the next part I'm going to talk about. That over there is my hiking bag. I got this like 
I don't know, I got it a long time ago. It's a Norwegian hiking bag that a friend of mine sent to me. Actually, my mom's friend of mine. She's still a friend of mine, but a friend of mine sent to me. And uh, it's a sick bag. It's super, super durable. I've used Akumas, the Taco, Taco Warehouse bags, uh, like a few others, like Under Armour bags. This is the only one that is upheld. I've used this for, God, I want to say like 10 or 11 years. It's a really old bag, but it's awesome. And it's super functional. And what I do, what I do when I'm out in the water, when I'm fishing a specific lake, so let's say I'm out on a muddy water lake, I think we're gonna be hitting crankbaits and jigs. I'll take the jig box and the shallow water crank box and I'll throw it in there. And then I put my soft plastics that match with the jig or just ones I wanna use and I'll throw them in the side pockets. Um, you know, it's not the most spacious bag, but it works when I'm on foot and it's super, super, super functional and comfortable, like I said. So basically why I keep this in here is just kind of a place to have all my tackle. So when I'm in a certain situation, I can take what I need and put it in this bag. The bag always stays in here. So this is kind of like my, you know, my my tackle compartment when I'm on foot. This is just the most functional method I've come up with. I've used a bunch of different methods. I don't even know if this is the best one, but this is the one I really like to use. So I keep all my tackle here, all my rods, a bag for when I'm on foot, and then like a few other compartments here too as well. So when I'm on the boat. So this not only works when I'm out on foot, but also helps when I'm going from boat to boat, if I'm going from one person's boat to another. I've actually got another bag right here that's up at my dorm that I use to store all my terminal tackle, and every single one of these boxes can fit into that bag right there. So if I'm going from boat to boat, if I'm at like a tournament or something like that, I can do so with ease. I'm trying to think what else. Uh, that's about it. I also keep a paddle in here too, just in case I'm out in the kayak or I don't know. I don't even have a kayak, but I have a paddle in here. It looks kind of cool. I mean, uh, it's a pretty loaded um, trunk. I like it. I don't normally drive too many people, so I keep that thing down, like I'd say 90% of the time. For some of you guys, are probably think, God, why is he making this video? It's hurting my eyeballs. But I, I know some of you guys really care about this stuff and are interested. Ah, I thought the video was done. No, it's not. Actually, I have something to talk about with you guys. Uh, being that you guys are my viewers and you guys just give me so much support in the uh, YouTube and Instagram and Facebook realm, I want to be level with you guys. I want to be open with you guys. Again, I'm not going to share like all my personal life, but I still want to let you guys know what's going on in my life. And as I'm taking steps to kind of grow my channel and grow who I am as an angler. So with this being said, I want to be open with you guys. I want to share stuff that's going on in my life. One of those things, uh, something I had to think about for quite some time. I contemplated and I thought about it and I thought about it and I finally made the decision. That decision is to drop out of college. School has never really been my strong suit. You know, and I really applaud those people that are able to sit down and absorb this information and really take a lot out of it. You know, there's some things that I, I am able to enjoy and learn, but I just really was never designed for the school setting, which I really wish I was, but some people just aren't meant for it. You know, before you make any accusations, thinking, you know, oh, he's gonna go back home, live with his parents, and work at uh, the nearest Domino's Pizza. That's not the case. YouTube has been really great and generous. Uh, it's a fantastic layout to not only um, share my experience with you guys and teach you, teaching you guys how to fish in different methods, but it's also helped me financially. Uh, you know, AdSense, as, as for those of you guys who don't know, helps me keep the channel alive. The other thing too is I've also got a, a full-time job offer, my first full-time job offer from Mystery Tackle Box. Uh, Ross over there asked me, I think, God, I think it was like two months ago, he's like, do you want to work full-time for us? And I thought, yeah, for sure. But then when I realized, you know, like, this would probably imply that I would have to drop out of college or stop early. The MTB guys are great dudes to work with. I don't think, I don't think I would, I would cut my degree short if I wasn't uh, working around some of the, the coolest people in the fishing industry. I mean, there's not a single dude who works there who isn't genuinely passionate about their company and their product. This doesn't mean that I'm gonna stop making videos for Fishing in the West. If anything, it's gonna enable me to free up some time for the Fishing in the West channel to create better content because I just have a really hard time balancing everything uh, here at school along with YouTube. So rather than dwelling on some of the negative aspects about this, school semester. I want to talk about a few things that I will genuinely miss about uh, the Hocking Hills area and kind of the Hocking College scene that I was put in for the past, wow, year and a half, I think maybe. I don't know how long I've been here. It feels like a century. <laughs> Anyways, I'm going to show you guys a few things that I'm going to miss about Hocking Hills. I think more than anything, I'm probably going to miss the Hocking Hills in themselves. Last year when it got too cold to fish, I used to spend hours back here hiking miles, getting lost in the woods and just enjoying the peacefulness. I think the hardest thing to say goodbye to about living here in Hocking Hills is these Hocking River smallmouth. There's nothing like it. 
along with the Hocking River. I'm gonna miss fishing all of these backwoods ponds that are littered throughout the Hocking Hills area. If you're around here, you need to take some time to hike these hills and look for these little gems that are scattered throughout this area. So when I got too warm to venture back into the Hocking Hills, I would take my bike and ride 16 miles over to Athens. And I'd bring my rod with me, and I'd go all the way down there and fish White's Mill. It's a fantastic bike ride. The things I saw and just like the experiences that you get when you're riding alone at that distance is so much fun, it's insane. I'm gonna miss this so much. You know, I'm not really into horses, but I'm really gonna miss these guys. <laughs> See you, buddy. <laughs> so this is pretty much the last thing I can think of that I'll really truly miss about Hawking. That being this big hill right here. If you're in Nelsonville, go to the top of this hill and watch the sunset. It's absolutely amazing. The hill faces right towards the sun as it slowly rests behind those hills. Beautiful. That is if you're into that kind of thing. <laughs> okay, sorry if this video seemed a little corny or cheesy or, you know, whatever. I'm sorry. I know you guys want to see me catch fish, talk about fishing. But, uh, yeah, it's coming soon, man. I've been busy getting packed up and get ready to end this whole finals week, which I pretty much completely bombed all the way through, uh, by the way. So, that uh, that's great. So, that's about it, guys. Thank you so much for watching today's video. Again, I'm sorry it wasn't anything crazy. Uh, if I... You know, lived in Alabama, I wouldn't be making these videos right now. Also, if I wasn't dropping out of college, I wouldn't be making these videos, but I am. And uh, <laughs> that's just kind of the nature of what today's video was about. Thanks for watching. If you haven't already subscribed, please go ahead and do so because that'd make my day. I've been having a ton of new subscribers. I get like new subscriber comments all the time and that stokes me up so much. Really pumped to see that. But uh, yeah, thank you so much for watching. I'll catch you guys next time on the next episode of Fishing in the Midwest.